welcome back to another Abnormally Normal video series here at Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. Things are a little mixed up and different in the world right now, but we here at Cheyenne Mountain Zoo are just as committed as ever to providing excellent world-class welfare for our animals, and that includes all the amazing training that we provide them, which is especially important for our orangutans here at Primate World. So my name's Carrie. Um, I have a couple of helpers here with me today, and you guys are gonna get to see some training with our Sumatran orangutan family. So we have here, just behind me, this is Baca. He is our daddy orangutan. He is 29 years old, um, and he's currently out in the yard today with Sumagu, our mama orangutan, and little baby Kara, who you will get to see in just a moment. So we do these training sessions very regularly with our orangutans here at the zoo. They are incredibly intelligent, and so providing them with lots of different choices and opportunities to participate in training is an absolutely fantastic thing for their welfare. Um, and the training that you guys are gonna get to see today focuses on some of the natural behaviors and features that make orangutans so incredibly special. So Baca is over here training with Heidi. You can see him, he's actually hanging on the side of the enclosure right now using both his hands and his feet. Orangutans are arboreal primates. That means they live almost entirely in the treetops. It's where they spend almost 90% of their time. And so they need to be able to move around in a way that's super efficient. And that means using both their hands and their feet to get around. So Bach is gonna give you an example of that with some climbing skills at the moment. So you can see he's using both his hands and his feet to make his way up the side of his exhibit. He's gonna prop himself up on this leaf right here and you can actually see there's a giant fire hose way above his head. He, his arms are long enough to be able to reach all the way over his head and grab up onto that big tall fire hose right above his head. One of the greatest things about our enclosure for the orangutans here at the zoo is that it's completely built for them to be able to use those natural behaviors. They can climb the walls, the ceilings, as well as all these fun vines and poles all throughout their exhibit. And Bach is giving you a really good example of how he would do just that, again, using both his hands and his feet. As he makes his way back down to, you can see one of the unique features of male orangutans is that they have these really sort of rinky kind of dreadlocks that are hanging down the side of Baca's back. And that's actually a very good feature for a male orangutan to have. Those dreadlocks not only make him look really big and impressive when he's hanging up high in the trees, as you just saw, it also helps keep them dry. So orangutans are found naturally in the rainforests of Southeast Asia, and having those dreadlocks helps the rain and the water from where they live roll right off their back and helps prevent it from sinking in deep to their skin. And that way they stay super nice and dry, so it's a really great feature. All right, Baca is now gonna come over and he is gonna show us an example of those big, beautiful arms. Now normally we would have a guest helping with this behavior, but we're gonna have Joanna help with this today, um, one of our lovely animal care managers. And this is what we call receiving an orangutan hug. So you can see, compared to Baca's arms, Joanna's arms aren't quite as long. Baca's arm span is over six feet long. It goes all the way across that huge glass panel. And that is, again, a really useful feature if you're an orangutan. Because these guys live up high in the treetops, they also travel and commute entirely through the trees. So being able to reach across big distances in treetops means that they can get where they need to go really, really easily. Now that's an example of how incredibly strong orangutans are. Sumagu, on this end of the yard, is now hopefully going to give us a demonstration of just how smart orangutans are. So in addition to being really strong, orangutans are also really, really good at problem solving. So you can see Sumagu over here with little baby Kara, and she's gonna come right up close to the glass for us. You might be able to see she's carrying something in her mouth, and we're gonna see just what it is she does. She's got this little piece of fabric, and so she's gonna hop up on this stump. Let's see what she does with this green piece of cloth. She's gotta have a look and see who's all here first and say hi to everybody. All right, so that's Sumagu's lovely little fashion statement there. She's gonna give herself a little hat. And this may look like a kind of silly behavior, but for an orangutan, this is actually a super, super useful thing to know how to do. She's giving herself a lovely little head covering, 
Now, I mentioned earlier when Baca was climbing around and you could see his big, long dreadlocks that orangutans live where it is naturally very wet and rainy. And so again, they are just like us. They don't like to get very cold and wet, but they don't have raincoats and umbrellas like we do. But again, being very smart and very good at solving problems, they found ways to create their own tools that they can solve this problem with. So in the wild, orangutans will actually make their own canopies and shelters out of the tools that they have available in their environment. Things like big leaves and palm fronds, they will actually weave those into canopies, put them over their head when they make their little nest every single night, and that way they stay nice and dry. You can actually see Kara off to the side of Sumagu there. She has her own little leaf that when Sumagu comes over and does this head covering, Kara gets her own leaf to play in with and practice with. This is exactly how she would be learning that behavior, um, is by watching mom and also being able to experiment with all the different things that she has in her environment. So being able to cover their heads like that is a really useful skill. All right, now Sumagu is going to give us her demonstration of some amazing climbing skills. So you can see as she goes up here, she's using both her hands and her feet. She's spread perfectly across those poles right there. And then she's going to climb on this little piece of vine. And I love this. Sumagu, whenever she gets to the top, she does this nice little pose where she stretches her arm, arms out and does this lovely pose. And you can really see here, Sumagu compared to Baka has quite different hair. She doesn't have the big, thick dreadlocks that Baca has. Instead, she's got very long, silky, smooth hair. And that's a really useful thing for a mama orangutan when you have a little kiddo with you. Now, Kara's two years old almost. She'll be two in June. And so she's getting more and more independent of mom every single day. But when she was first born, she actually spent the first six months of her life clinging onto Sumagu with that nice, long hair. So having the long hair means that baby has something to cling to, and it's for, for that first six months of baby's life, they do not break body contact once with mom. So if you're a human mom or a dad, imagine having your kids and not being able to put them down for the first six months of life. That's basically what an orangutan does. The only difference is they have four hands as opposed to us just having the two hands. So it makes it a lot easier for them to be able to move around and get things done if baby's able to cling on to those nice long hair uh, hairs that Sumagu has on her body. Okay, now we're hopefully going to get an example here of, again, just how incredibly smart Sumagu is. She already gave you one example of uh, how she's good at tool use she is, using different kinds of cloth to cover her head and keep herself dry. And now we're going to get an example of, again, tool use with orangutans. So again, being incredibly intelligent and incredibly smart, they're really good at using tools to manipulate and solve problems in their environment. Sumagu's going to make her way over, and you can probably see she has a stick in her mouth that she's going to bring over. And this is Eleanor, who is just training with Sumagu. And we're going to see if Sumagu today wants to do some fishing. Now, orangutans, again, eat lots of different kinds of foods in the wild, but they mostly eat fruit and things that are really high in calories to help keep them going and make them be able to climb and get around like they need to. And so sometimes they'll come across fruits or food sources that might be kind of hard to get to. A really good example would be something like honey. If an orangutan came across a big hive full of maybe bees that had delicious honey inside of it, they wouldn't want to stick their entire hand in it, so what they could do instead is use a tool. So Sumagu here has a stick in her mouth, and if you look closely, Joanna's on the other side. This little port, it has a tiny little hole that goes all the way through to the other side of the orangutan yard. It's very small, it's not big enough for her to be able to fit her finger through, but Sumagu can just fit a stick perfectly inside of it. So she's gonna use this little stick to fish and stick in. Joanna's holding up a cup that has some yummy orangutan smoothie inside of it. It's some mashed up fruits and honey and other really good stuff that our orangutans really like. And so you can see Sumagu wouldn't be able to solve this problem with her hands. She has to use a tool. And so she's using that stick to fish all the way through the port, pull the stick back out, and then get yummy tastes of that smoothie off at the end of the stick. And you might be able to see she does have Kara with her. Um, and this is, again, exactly how Kara will learn these different kinds of important skills and behaviors growing up. It's really great for her to be able to find out exactly how to use these tools and develop these skills. And this is exactly how she's going to do it, is by hanging out close to mom 
and um, figuring things out and watching and learning as she grows up and gets bigger. All right, so Shima is done fishing for the day. She had a couple of quick tastes. She's then going to make her way back over to where she was training with Eleanor. Um, you can see she's still got the stick in her mouth right there. She may have wanted to hang on to it for a little bit. And she's going to make her way back to Eleanor. And then if you look closely, you might even be able to see Sumabu's even going to give the stick back to Eleanor. And that's another really useful behavior for orangutans here at the zoo to know. Um, these guys are really, really strong, really, really smart. Sometimes they get a hold of stuff they aren't supposed to have. Occasionally things like nuts and bolts will actually um, come loose in their exhibit and they will get a hold of them and they are actually trained to trade those back to us so that that way we can get a hold of things. So Sumagu gave the stick back to Eleanor and Eleanor in return gives her a yummy tasty piece of fruit. And so that way they know how to train and uh, exchange the, and trade those different things as a very useful behavior as well. All right, so we are just about finished up with our orangutan training for today. Um, and that's gonna do it for our abnormally normal video series. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm so glad that you got to hang out with our Sumatran orangutan family today. Once again, my name's Carrie. We had Eleanor, Heidi, and Joanna with us here today. Don't forget to keep tuning in to our abnormally normal video series. Thanks, you guys. <laughs>